and gentlemen, what's going on? Welcome to episode 182 of the It's Obvious podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Preston Pugh, and I'm joined by my good and best friend, Garrett Drake. Uh, what's good, boy? Hey. How, are How you was doing? your week? <laughs> no, it, was, <laughs> it was great. Just, uh, just a lot of work and uh, no play. How was yours? Well, likewise, my friend. I imagine I didn't work nearly as hard as you did, but I did work uh, just about every day this week. And I work again tonight and the following two nights. So, you know, I'm just keeping it real. I'm actually been staying at uh, Casey's apartment in Atlanta, babysitting our pooch, Peachy, while she's out of town. She gets back uh, early Tuesday morning. So I've just been kind of holding down the fort, taking care of the doggy going to work every day it's kind of weird it's very lonely because uh, i don't you know i don't talk to you and jacob too much during the week <laughs> at least as much as we used to so i've just been kind of in seclusion playing games by myself at her apartment so that's how my week was i hear well that sounds fun sometimes yeah. i like just uh every now and then just having you know a place to yourself where you can kind of just you know chill don't have to worry about anybody bugging you you know Oh, I get that. Yeah, I live that quite frequently, whether I'm here or at my parents' house. So uh -huh. in that sense, I, I could have could have used some some company. It's good I had the dog, though. We just hung out and uh, just went on walks and uh, sat around and played games all week. So it wasn't too bad. But uh, yeah, um, it is kind of a weird week. Jacob is not with us, obviously. It's you and I talking via Skype exclusively. No video either. So it is... Uh, it's a dead week as far as presentation is concerned, but it's good to be here nonetheless with you, Preston. I uh, miss you terribly, as usual, and I uh, look forward to talking about some video games. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else to talk about for my week that's interesting to, to spice up the intro here. Um, I don't think I did anything even remotely exciting, nor did I see or hear anything exciting. It's one of those weeks. Anything yeah. for you? Uh, I definitely have something to tell you, and I hate to say it yet again, but it's something I cannot say in the podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it is very, uh, very interesting. So I don't even know why I brought it up. I'm just teasing people here now. But uh, yeah, man, not, nothing really. Just super boring. I was just down in uh, Alabama and uh, just, just, just doing work down there and trying to get in as much video game time as possible. Um, you Wall smashed some ass there. this week, dude. I did. I played a lot of Smash. Um, pretty much it. <laughs> a lot of Smash and some uh, Madden. That's pretty That's much cool. it. That's cool. Do you play yeah. Madden with Paul? Yeah, just I played some games that uh, Smash and Madden that you know you can play with play with two people. So, did you win every football game and every match of Smash? Uh, I won. We only played I think one or two football games, and it. And yes, I did win that one uh, quite handily, but um, it was just due to, uh, I think it was just really late, and uh, he just kept throwing picks, like, one after another. So <laughs> it Sounds like me. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so yeah, I definitely won that. And then uh, Smash Bros, I won all but one game. So Excellent. Yeah. But yeah. he's, uh, that was his first time playing, so. Not so bad though. Did you did you let him win? Or was it a genuine victory? No, it was a genuine victory. I was playing okay. as uh like Isabel or something, and I was just learning mm -hmm. how to play as her. So, nice. so that's why. Well, I too yeah, played some a lot of fun. That's cool. A little bit. I told you I played for well, well it felt like ten minutes. It was more like an hour. Yeah. But I did uh, a little mini community get together online, and uh, it was me, Kyle, and I think Carlos was there, and a few others. Um, and uh, we duked it out for a bit online. It did lag a lot, but uh, is, is it dependent on their servers or is it dependent on who's hosting? Is it dedicated servers with Smash? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. I, I Probably not. Um, I, I have been reading that if that you need to get like a, a LAN adapter if, if you want it to be, you know, as smooth as possible. Yeah. And I hope they clean that up because that is uh, ripe for online play all the yeah. time for sure but uh, i lost the majority of the matches but it was a lot of fun and uh, i know i know jacob and i had talked about hopefully the three of us at some point hosting a uh stream on twitch and have a ton of people join in and just get in the lobby and just duke it out for a few hours would be fun but uh yeah despite getting my ass kicked all the time it's a lot of fun still so 
for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm absolutely loving it. Are you, have you unlocked any more characters? You feeling anybody? Um, I've unlocked uh, probably like 10, 15 characters. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty decent with Link, uh, Kirby, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. Who else? I like Fox and um, Samus a lot. Okay. So those those th- I would say those are the big four for me for now. Yeah, I I uh, pretty much main either young link or simon i really like simon yeah i hear simon's awesome yeah he's really easy character to to pick up and he's just he's very like a good like mid-ranged ranged character he can throw out like the cross and the axes and the holy water and uh, his whip has some pretty good reach so you can kind of keep people at bay um yeah I, i really really like him uh I've been playing as a Bayonetta the past couple of nights as well, and she is is really awesome. She's fun to play as. Um, and then Zelda, I I just randomly picked her uh, a few nights ago, and I had a blast playing with her. And uh, yeah, so I've I been playing as her a lot. She can throw down her down B. Is she like summons one of those phantom? I, I'm forgetting the name name of them, but I remember they were in the the Phantom Hourglass Zelda DS game. But these uh these knights in like purple armor, and she summons them, and they like run across the stage and and swipe. Um, I thought I think that's a that's a pretty cool move. Um, but dude, something I f- I I figured out um actually while I was playing the game, but then I I think I saw it in like a tip later on. But uh, have you played as a uh, like Ryu or Ken? from street fighter okay so you know in street fighter to do a uh, hadouken you do like down like you swipe from down to right and you push a button to do a hadouken yeah um which you can just do a hadouken regularly just by pushing b and not touching anything else and he'll do a hadouken but you can actually do the quarter circle down to right and he'll do a stronger hadouken that's pretty cool. Yeah, I just thought that that was just so so awesome. Just how all these characters have these small things or like small callbacks to the game they came from. Like po- Pokemon take damage when they're in water. If you're a fire Pokemon and you get in water, you like slowly take damage. Just things like that that like relate to the character. I think that is so awesome. Yeah, it does have, definitely has that extra special attention to detail. Yeah. It helps it set apart from not. I mean, obviously, it's a huge. Uh, um, cast of characters coming together, Avengers uh, Infinity War style, but ten times the scale. But like you said, on top of that, it's all those tiny details, all the characters and the stages and the music and everything. It's just the, t- the total package as far as uh, you can't even really say just a Nintendo roster anymore. It's so much beyond that, and it seems like with the DLC, it's going to go even further beyond that. So, yeah, it is pretty freaking sweet, man. Yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I might get to play some tonight at work. I have a, uh, like I like to describe, a karaoke night at the venue. So oh, nice, man. I should have some time to uh, kick back and get my ass kicked and smash. It should be a good time. For sure. Oh, yeah, something kind of cool did happen. Uh, that's unrelated. It kind of has to do with what we were talking about because we talked about Madden for a second. But uh, so one morning in my hotel room, I, I go downstairs and there's just a bunch of giant men down there just like I like just, the sound of that yeah just huge dudes and uh like so 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 many of them and so just jacked i i was like like what, what's going on down here and then i uh turned the corner and there's there's two dudes sitting at a, a table like a lot like just normal looking guys and they were wearing uh birmingham iron shirts and then it hit me i was like oh these guys are football players um and uh Paul, my coworker, ran over to me, and he's a big Alabama fan. He was like, "Dude, there's Blake Sims over there," which he used to be a uh, quarterback for Bama back in 2014, 15. I don't remember the exact year, but yeah, this the the there's a new football league starting in February called the AAF. I believe it stands for the Alliance of American Football, and uh, it's kind of like a minor league, not pro. It, it some former pro players are playing in it um but but like i said it's more of like a a minor league and uh it starts right after the super bowl around february 10th and 
it seems pretty cool. There's an Atlanta team called the Atlanta Legends, and uh, former Georgia quarterback Aaron Murray is going to be the quarterback. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. They're playing so is he no at, longer in the NFL? Was he ever in the NFL? <laughs> he was in it. I believe he played for the Chiefs for a little bit, but he's been like a, a, a SEC analyst on CBS okay. for like a while now. I actually listened to him in a – he does a podcast called the Punt and Pass Podcast, um, and I listened to it. So I've been hearing about him talking about uh, being drafted and stuff for a while now. That's but, exciting. Uh, yeah, dude. I'm, I'm actually really – I don't know how long this league will last. Like who knows – how much money it'll make or whatever like it might only last a season or two but uh i'm excited to like get get in on get in on it like as it actually starts and uh you know try and follow it maybe buy some uh merch or go to a game or two or whatever that's cool that it starts right after the super bowl too it's kind of like football year round at that point yeah no exactly like just off in the dead season so hopefully it picks up i think that's actually brilliant on the leagues uh on the league's part to to have it occur during that time of the year. Yeah, so for sure. They're playing at Georgia State's stadium. Um, so I guess they're not more important enough to play at the bins, right. which <laughs> doesn't make sense to me because it's like, what else is going on in the bins? Yeah. Like yeah, soccer, that time soccer's year, over. The, we'll just know. move the Braves in there too, man. We'll make it a baseball field. <laughs> yeah. Like Falcons will be done. Soccer will be done. Like what, what else is going to be going on in there? I know there? it's a music venue a lot of the time for events and such, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they'll upgrade to the bins if they're successful. You know what'll solidify their success is if they make it a lingerie, uh, lingerie league, like <laughs> the yeah, women's yeah, lingerie yeah. football exactly. league. If they make yeah. it the men's version of that, probably move into the bins fairly quickly. That's what they need to do, for sure. I'm not hoping for that, dude. It's just an idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, the That's only cool, thing though. that I'm a little bummed about is the colors of the Atlanta United. Um, I feel like they should have stuck with the just kind of red and black thing that the – you know, the Falcons and United. Well, United is kind of like red and gold, but, you know, just kind of like red incorporated. But uh, mm-hmm. the legends are purple and gold. Purple and gold, huh? Purple and gold. It's not Sounds the worst thing royal. ever. The uniforms look pretty cool. And the shirts that they've kind of released now, they, they're pretty cool. But uh, I wish they would have stuck with, with red. But I'm a fan of blue and gold, personally. Okay. And purple and gold's cool, too, I guess. But blue and gold been nice. Yeah. But yeah, man, yeah. it looks pretty cool. That maybe, cool. Uh, maybe one day we uh, we could all go down to a game since it's just close down to Atlanta, and the tickets are ridiculously cheap. We can get seasons tickets for like eighty bucks, <laughs> dude. Done deal. So it it will be a good time. But I like uh, anywho, the sound of that. Uh, I didn't. I uh, besides Madden and that, I played some more Beat Saber when I got home. Um, I'm still just absolutely enjoying that game so much uh it's just so fun um just it's so play it. it's so fast too it's just like you have 10 minutes you just hop in and play a song and get off um that, that's one of the main reasons i'm playing it is because you know you can you can just get a just just hop in for a second and hop out um don't have to get dedicated dude that's why i have not played dragon quest in like a week and i want to play it so bad but i I'm I'm either too tired when I come home to get invested, so I'll play Smash or something, or when I'm at home, I I just have a a little bit of time, so I'll play some Beat Saber or something. And and Dragon Quest is so involved, like I you have to pay attention in the combat, and you have to pay attention to like what's going on in the story. Like I I've tried to get into it, so I'll turn on Dragon Quest, and I'll 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 know that to continue the story, I have to like literally run forward from where I'm saved, but I end up running backwards and just start grinding out levels and stuff because i i don't have you know enough time to get involved in anything so i'll just be killing random enemies and listen to like a podcast for like 15 minutes then i'll go off to bed or whatever so that's a little uh a little sad because uh i i really 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 like that game but uh not a lot of time but hopefully hopefully this this coming week will be a little little more chill and i can hop back into that so yeah, I feel you. I played, um, well, I bought two games this week. I bought The Order again digitally because it was on sale. For like, and, what, uh, three bucks or something? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have the copy already at my house, uh-huh. but like I said, I was in Atlanta, and uh, I guess in hopes of them potentially making a sequel down the road, maybe that extra three bucks will encourage them to do so at yeah. some point. Uh, but I bought that. I didn't. I haven't played it yet. I'll definitely replay that at some point for fun, but 
bought that, and I also bought The Lost Legacy, finally, uh, Uncharted, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I think I'm nearing the end. That's mostly what I played this week. Oh, did you never play that? No, I never did. Oh, wow. So it's pretty solid, and I'm amazed. I know they're very different in a lot of ways, but I'm amazed at how much more I enjoy it over Shadow of the Tomb Raider <laughs> uh, <laughs> in yeah. so many ways, <laughs> not only in storytelling and, and uh, I mean, graphically, gameplay, uh, the acting in the game, all of it, even the writing is just far more uh, engaging than Shadow of the Tomb Raider was for me. And I'm not even trying to dump on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's a fine game for what it is, but I'm just reminded of that Naughty Dog quality and the, the B team of Naughty Dog, nonetheless, for the most part. That worked on that game, and it's still phenomenal. And uh, I've really yeah. enjoyed all of that so far. And I'm pretty close to the end. I probably have about an hour left or so, but it's been a good time. So you're past the uh, the big, I believe it's the chapter four, the big open area. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I liked it in the beginning, too, just driving around the Jeep and going to the, uh, I mean, it's essentially a little hub world to explore, but I like driving around the Jeep. That feels good, obviously, and finding hidden treasures and extra little puzzles to earn trophies and whatnot but yeah. Yeah, i really like uh chloe and nadine's relationship and how that develops over the course of the game and their dialogues really really solid and, and and again i love red dead and like we've talked about uh in the previous episodes i mean i got really used to the way that game feels mechanically but uncharted is just so buttery silky smooth even while aiming with a controller just feels excellent yeah and i'm like if I mean, I, I like Red Dead. I got over the fact that it feels stiff in the beginning, but um, I was just, again, reminded of just that nolly dog polish that was just excellent. And I'm not saying Red Dead isn't polished, but just their third-person action combat shooting mechanics just feel really good. So, and uh, it's kind of my way of experiencing Uncharted 4 again. I don't know if I'll ever replay Uncharted 4 because I only played it that one time. I didn't go for the Platinum or anything, but uh, Lost Legacy has been a nice reminder of what I loved about 4. And that's cool to see it uh, through different characters that just un un uncharted gameplay and storytelling. And, and it also encouraged me, like you, I think you guys may have mentioned that I think if they continue the franchise with new characters, I think it could still be really successful. It's no Nathan Drake, of course, but I think Chloe and Nadine have plenty of charisma to keep me engaged from start to finish. So characters like that, I think I'm on board for whatever they decide to do next with that franchise. Yeah, for sure. So it's cool too though. It was it was a nice little getaway from the stuff I've been playing recently, like mostly competitive shooters online. And of course, I'm enjoying Smash. But as far as just playing something on PS4, it was nice to just go to this exotic. I can't remember exactly where they're at, but this exotic jungle and just explore they're in, and they're in solve India puzzles somewhere. and shoot bad guys and stealth around and everything. So it's been fun. Yeah. Well, that's really cool, man. Totally, dude. Totally. Um, I think that's all I played. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't touch PC this week, unfortunately, because I've been gone the whole time. I hope to get back to that later this week. So. Yeah, I hear you. There's there's really nothing on PC that like. I like really want to play right now. Besides, yeah, same with me, uh, which is weird because there are countless games on PC at our disposal, and nothing's calling to me at the moment. Yeah, the only, uh, like normally a. Uh, a week or two ago when I had some free time, I would hop in and play a, a match of Black Ops or something, but now I'm just playing Beat Saber. Um, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> I, I'm kind of in a, in a PS4 mood right now for some reason. Oh, no, I am I am for sure. I uh, I told you I, I could have gotten either Dragon Quest on PC or PS4, and for some reason the PS4 called out to me for that. Same with, uh, I think I told you I was probably going to get Resident Evil 2 Remake on PS4 as well for some reason. Yeah. Um, Is that coming to pc as well uh i'm a yeah 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 yeah. pretty sure interest coming out yeah, that's like a bold move getting it on ps4 yeah i don't i i think i i explained it last week that i, I just have a feeling that i want to get on ps4 but I've, I've platinumed every other resident evil on ps4 and, and the platinums for those games are are uh mostly uh or for the most part have been extremely enjoyable um they require, you know, like multiple playthroughs and, and stuff like that. And I just enjoy getting the, uh, the trophies for that. So yeah, I'm not worried that. about performance or anything because, uh, Resident Evil seven ran fine for, for what I remember. And, uh, this, this looks like it, it's running good as well. So I don't know. There's just something about Resident Evil, just playing it with a, a controller feels right to me that it would, it would feel a little, weird if i was playing it you know with a keyboard and mouse i don't know yeah i know what you're saying 
um, what was I going to say? I know what I'm going to want to play after I see Into the Spider Verse, which I have yet to see. I'm waiting to see it with Casey when she gets back in town, uh, yep. which was just debilitating this weekend. Everyone talking about the reactions yeah, to it. Everybody is it. saying it, how insane it is. You know when you're going to go see it? Uh, probably this coming week for sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm hoping to see it Tuesday night finally because I'm just dying to see that. And I love how they added Peter Parker's suit from the movie to the final DLC of Spider Man. Yeah, That's pretty I'm cool. so happy. I don't. Is that a part of the news? The new Spider Man DLC? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, I'll just I'll just say my my piece when we get to that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I know I'm gonna want to swing around in that game for hours on end after seeing that movie. So t- I'm very yep. glad the game exists for that reason. For sure. So, yeah, dude. Um, I also saw the Mule uh, yesterday. Uh, oh. Clint Eastwood's new movie. Have you seen the trailer for that? I have. Okay, yeah, it was uh, it was very, very good. Um, it you know Clint Clint Eastwood's style. It's weird because it isn't super low budget, but it feels low budget in the sense of, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it felt very small. Um, the plot was relatively simple, and it it wasn't the movie itself wasn't quite as intense as the trailer made it out to be, but it was still really good. Um, solid performances across the board. I thought Clint Eastwood was excellent. Um. And I think what really is the draw of that movie is the story, not so much action you'd expect. And the suspense that's ap- that's promoted in the trailer, it, the movie isn't as sus- suspenseful as I was expecting it to be. But the uh, movie was cool. Uh, Clint Eastwood is probably nearing the end of his days, unfortunately. You can see his age in the movie for sure. But he still has... It's, it's fun, amazing how old he is, and he still has that charisma as if he was still in his prime, <laughs> being a yeah. super old guy. But... Uh, I, I, I think when I say it feels cheap is when Tom Hanks said in an interview once that Clint Eastwood is at the point in his career where when he shoots a movie, he'll do one take. And if he's happy with it, he'll just move on. Oh. <laughs> Whereas most directors where the, the direct opposite of that, for example, would be David Fincher. where He's known for doing 60 or 70 takes, takes of a single scene which is just ridiculous to some people and to a lot of people probably, but Clint Eastwood will literally shoot a scene once. And if he thinks it's good enough, he'll be like, all right, let's move on. <laughs> so some scenes you can kind of feel that. Like, I feel like some, whether, whether it's the way a line's delivered or a, the way an action scene plays out or a cut happens, I'm like, maybe if they shot that a couple more times, they could have found a better take, but I wouldn't say that takes away from the movie at all. You can just kind of sense that when you watch it. But uh, I really enjoyed the story in the movie. And Clint Eastwood, of course, is awesome. And hopefully he can crank out a couple more before he croaks. Because that'll be a sad day, of course. Um, but uh, the movie itself reminded me a lot of Gran Torino. If you enjoyed Gran Torino, you'll probably enjoy The Mule. So I recommend it. Cool. Isn't and to be honest, though, I, I wish Sp- I was seeing Spider-Man that day. But I saw it <laughs> with my dad for his birthday. So That's about doing drugs or something, right? Or hauling yeah, drugs. he's uh, in The Mule... Uh, Suggests that he is uh, like a driver who transports drugs uh, from point A to point B in the movie for a drug cartel. Gotcha. So. A random thing that's just reminding me of the movie. Did you ever see The Shot Caller? Ah, uh, that sounds so familiar. Is that the guy, with the guy from uh, Game of Thrones? Yes. Yeah, that movie's awesome. Okay. Yeah. That is. Yeah, a I really enjoyed that. Fantastic movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That one took me by surprise, too, because my mom and sister just rented it on the TV, and it just started when I walked downstairs, and I was it just caught my attention for some reason. I watched the entire thing. I thought it was great. Yeah, some guy on my Twitter just was like, watch this right now. And for mm-hmm. some reason, it, I just I actually did. <laughs> Typically, I don't. But uh, if somebody is like, I swear it's good, uh, give it a watch. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. But for some reason that night, I, I, was, I just had a feeling about it. And uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I'm also excited to see Bumblebee because the reviews are really solid for that. And uh, same for Aquaman. Aquaman hasn't blown the roof off of Rotten Tomatoes by any means, but it has pretty positive reviews across the board. And I'm a huge James Wan fan, which I've discussed in the past. So excited to see all three of those especially. And it's cool that their trailers looked great, and it's good to know that their movies are just about as good as the trailers are. So Yeah, that's cool. Um, super stoked for that. 
But yeah, dude, I think that's all I have going on, man. If you want to jump into our minimal news from this week. Yeah, man, let's do it. This is the It's Obvious Podcast, the show where my best friend and I get together every single week to discuss video games. Obviously, you can find all of our content, including the video version of this podcast, over at youtube.com slash It's Obvious Gaming. If YouTube isn't good for you or you'd like to take us on the go, you can find this podcast weekly on Audio Boom, Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and other podcasting services. Please check the description down below for links to our social media pages pages our discord channel playstation names or playstation community pretty much anything you would ever need to get in contact with us and be sure to like and comment down below to get involved with the it's obvious community and be sure to start subscribe to the channel as well and uh yeah we would be forever in your debt for that and with all that out of the way hey man what's the news um let's see preston uh, like i said it's quite small we should have talked about this while we were talking about movies a second ago, but have you seen the Godzilla, the new Godzilla King of the Monsters trailer? Um, I think I saw one like, wasn't there one that came out a little while ago? There was, but there's a new one that's out. Okay, I have not seen the new one. Okay, dude, it is so awesome. I'm so excited for that movie. I've never been like a Godzilla junkie or any, by any means or like a monster, like a huge monster movie fan. But this movie looks so good and I'm hoping it is uh like i said with all these other movie trailers that are their movies are delivering on the promise of their trailers i'm hoping godzilla does the same because the trailer is mind-blowing like the visual effects and the scale of the monsters and all the monsters in it and it looks so epic too and bear mccreary did the music for god of wars doing the music for the film as well Ooh. so all those reasons i'm very excited we should check it out it looks awesome yeah definitely i really really enjoyed the first one um yeah i think i went and saw it like two or three times in the theater i don't remember Man, if you like the look of that one, I think this trailer yeah. is going to get you really hyped because it looks incredible. Yeah, I will so, I'm yeah. definitely going to check it out. Yeah. Speaking of things on a large scale, have you seen the alpha footage for Beyond Good and Evil where the de developers talk about kind of the gameplay in the world I itself? I saw that they were doing some live stream and I, I just haven't gone and, and watched it back again. Have, did you check it out? I did, yeah. I, I skimmed through it a bit. I watched... Uh, in its entirety about the first 10 minutes while I was at work the other night mm -hmm. and I skimmed through the rest but uh, I'm, I'm amazed at just how gargantuan its world is and their ambition for that game and it's it's bizarre to me because it almost feels like they're just using the Beyond, Beyond Good and Evil title to sell the game or to promote the game because some people are, are relatively familiar with that title, especially you, of course, people who played the original game. But mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how, other than the characters, some of the characters, of course, gameplay-wise, how it even remotely reflects the original game. Not that that really matters, but it's just such a departure from what you've described to me as the original that it's kind yeah. of surprising. Yeah, I I love the original. Um, the I, I rented it on a whim um, at... I forgot what video store it was. It wasn't Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. It was just some, some random one near my house, and uh, never heard of it or anything. Just just picked it up, and I was I remember even as a kid just being shocked at at how much I I loved it, and I I never even heard of the game or anything. But when I think of that game, I I think of the characters of of Peg. I believe he's the pig, and and then Jade, the main character, and. I just remember sneaking around a lot and like taking pictures of things um, and then driving around on a boat and, and collecting these spear, these uh, spheres. But uh, and then there, there was combat, but I, I don't think it was anything like insane. I, I just remember a ton of stealth, uh, stealth segments. Um, so, yeah, but based on the, the alpha footage I saw, like even before what this came out. Yeah, I, I've, I have no clue what what this how this relates to the original so <laughs> i know it's a prequel so I, i'm sure there has to be uh story beats or or things that you know relate to the original like a, they can't just you know have nothing to do with it but um yeah uh, I, I liked how there are multiple uh species you can play as i don't know if i, I have the the courage to play as an ape <laughs> but it's kind of cool <laughs> that you have the option uh, some RPG elements in there. We'll see how many people describe the game. It's just an RPG through and through. But, uh, uh -huh. you know, it has like the stats you can build up and gear you can find and customize. And you have your own little ship you can customize, which is pretty cool, and fly it all over the like the galaxy, I guess. Uh -huh. And I, I thought I was pretty impressed that they 
are having it where if you're playing co-op with someone, you can literally be in space on like a space station and your buddy can be all the way down on the planet just roaming the city at the same time. Yeah. That's pretty wild. Do you think this will land on current gen? Do you think this is definitely next gen? Because it seems next gen to me. Yeah. It, it, it's not coming out anytime soon. No, because it, it so. definitely <laughs> seems like it has a long, long, long way to go. Yeah. But I do like how open they're being with the development process in that game because they've been pretty transparent since it was announced. And uh, I wish more developers would do that. And I get to an extent that sort of spoils things for people. Yeah. Um, but I wish we could find a nice middle ground between being incredibly secretive and being as transparent as uh, who's who's i know it's, it's ubisoft right yeah okay so i wish we could find a middle ground there like i'd love to see more of i mean i'm sure we will at some point but more of cyberpunk for example um really games that i mean i think especially open world type games because they're a little more uh, I, I feel like you can get away with revealing more without spoiling stuff, whereas something like The Last of Us Part Two, for example, is so focused on story that the more you show, the more it's going to give away. Even the world itself is like a character in that game, and even just locations and stuff can give away plot points. So I, I get why you have to be extra secretive with narrative-driven games like that, but games with the size and scope of like an open-world character-driven RPG or something could be cool to see more of uh, as the development goes on, but I don't know. That's just my two cents on the thought on uh, that situation, but Beyond Good and Evil looks pretty cool. I'll probably play it. That's really cool. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, you, speaking... Are you allowed to talk about Anthem yet? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, because uh, I, I, I watched another so. developer. I think it was IGN posted it of like, uh-huh. a developer live stream where they talked about the game a bit. Uh huh. And I, uh, I don't think so because I was listening to a podcast. I forget which one, but they were still saying they couldn't talk about it. Right, okay. So you know, I imagine there's some stuff in the alpha that they did not talk about in that live stream. But uh-huh. um, maybe it, it, uh-huh. it looks cool. I mean, of course, like I've said, I want to design my, uh, what are they called again? Uh, <laughs> Jaegers or something? That nuts no, from... <laughs> Javelins. Javelins, because I'm, I'm thinking Jaegers <laughs> from uh, that Guillermo del Toro movie, Pacific yeah. Rim. I, I didn't see the sequel. I heard it was terrible. But uh, yeah, I want to design my Javelin and, of course, customize the colors and the gear um, I think that alone, just the idea of making making my own Iron Man suit and shooting aliens, even if it's for only five to ten hours max, uh-huh. and I and I bail like I did with uh, what's that other Ubisoft game that we're excited about? This the Division. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm excited about the Division too for some reason. It just looks really cool to me. But uh-huh. um, the idea of playing Anthem and even the Division on PC. Similar games where it's kind of like a, a sort of grindy, loot-based, and customize your gear and your weapons and stuff. But Anthem's intriguing in the sense where we, like you're on a foreign planet in, iron, in an Iron Man suit. So I, I'm not intrigued enough, like I said, to, to have signed up for the alpha, but the gameplay I've seen is slowly grasping my attention more and more. So I'm hoping when you can finally talk about the alpha, it really makes me want to play it for myself. Yeah. But yeah. Bummer, dude. I was hoping to dig some info out of you. Oh, I mean, I'll, yeah. But in time, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You and Jacob I'll, both. I'll, I'll, I, I might, we might be able to talk about it right now, but I just, I don't know. But I'll, I'll, I'll Google it and stuff, see if, when I can. I feel so, like it's not like, yeah, it's, but, it's not a big deal at, I don't know. I feel like, dude, <laughs> I feel like I can't talk about it because I'm, it's so secret and important and stuff. And if yeah. you <laughs> actually saw what it was. You find then, out uh, it's actually the next Mass Effect and Anthem's a code name. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's actually Dragon Age, dude. It's Dragon Age in the future. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Mass Effect, this reminds me, have you heard or read anything else about the new Obsidian game, the, the Outer Lands? I, I keep forgetting what the name of the game is. Here and there. I've seen some headlines. Uh, since the initial reveal, I've been read more, much more into it other than just headlines I've seen. Yeah. So apparently it is not a open world game. Really? Yes, it is more of a Mass Effect type game where there are big areas that you explore. Um, and it is not a massive triple A type game either. Like the develop uh, cycle for this, I believe, is only going to be like two and a half years. And it's, uh, I believe the article I read stated that they were saying it was like a double A game. So okay. uh, just kind of those two things, because, uh, you know, I think the the headline of the article was something about like 
everybody's calling it fallout new vegas 2.0 or like the next big like fallout killer or something like that but so people thinking that and i was kind of thinking that as well when they released it but need to kind of like taper your expectations on how big or how massive like this this game is going to be so it's it's not going to be anything like new vegas in terms of like scope or content and stuff so well, that's good uh good to hear i guess to go in knowing that yeah now besides that i still think it's going to be really really good I, I i have no doubt they're going to tell a really cool story and uh you're going to have uh you know choices that affect it. i almost feel like with it being a smaller game then they might be able to make your choices like matter more you know because it yeah. won't be as difficult if it was you know a, a bigger massive game um but uh i'm still uh nonetheless very very excited for that game yeah you and me both the more I hear about it the the cooler it sounds so it is surprising that's not open world because it seemed that way in the trailer but uh yeah. thanks for filling me in there just big areas i can get into that brah yeah i think it'll be fun it'll be fun i agree uh, before I forget, I wanted to plug this real quick. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be a guest on COG's latest episode of the podcast, which I'm not sure if, if it's gone live yet, but it's all about uh, their Game of the Year awards. And uh, it was super fun and uh, always an honor to be a part of that when I can. So if you guys have any interest in hearing their Game of the, war, Game of the Year awards that I was in, a part of, they, it's interesting how they do it. They uh, have a discussion about all their nominees and then they kind of decide on the top 10 together so it's kind of cool in that sense i thought it might, might be kind of fun for us which will probably be i i hope it'll be next week if jacob can be with us but we're going to do our game of the year talk and like our top five games of the year and everything i think it'd be cool if we discuss our personal game games of the year but then also decide in like in unison what we think should be like the number one game of the year and see if we garner any uh heated not heated but discussions and arguments about what we think deserves to be the game of the year knowing uh -huh. us will probably agree regardless of whatever it is but I, i'm interested to see if uh we can kind of have a discussion about what we think really deserves to be number one even beyond like our personal game of the year uh-huh so that, that was kind of fun but uh if you guys don't already listen to cox podcast it's pretty awesome and uh it was an honor to be a part of that so just wanted to plug that if it's not already out it should be out soon that's anyway cool. You get heard about uh, Epic's crossplay tools? Uh, I did. Yes. Yeah, this is pretty groovy. Uh, I, I like how, beyond just the immense success Epic has seen through Fortnite, um, that they are uh, investing their success into benefiting the industry as a whole. Notably, of course, with their store, which has now been undercut by Discord's new store that's incoming, which is hilarious. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> that and. Uh, this these crossplay tools that are they're dishing out for everyone to enable developers on any engine from any company to implement crossplay if they so desire and it doesn't even have to be just entirely across the board they can mix and match where if they want to do we would just want to crossplay xbox and uh, android i don't know why you'd ever want to do that but they have that option so that's really awesome and uh I, i'm of course not a fortnite hater i don't uh, particularly enjoy playing the game that often but um, you can't deny its success and Epic's uh, valiant efforts to benefit the industry through that success is pretty cool. So it'd be one thing if they just flaunted their billions like they tip typically do it on show floors <laughs> at the past two conferences I've been to. But uh, even aside from that, they're doing a lot of cool things. So I thought that was pretty, pretty sweet. That is cool. Yeah, I'd like to see cross play for a few things. I think... Uh, like Zach and I, for example, Zach was playing Battlefield on Xbox and I was on PC and uh, we could not cross play, unfortunately, but that'd be kind of cool. Mm. So I mean, cross play, of course, has been a pretty big topic this year, especially. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how things play out in 2019 if developers utilize these tools to bring cross play to their their games. So there's a lot to look forward to next year. I'm excited. Even things like that, even beyond the games themselves or features and stuff and potentially new console announcements and everything. Like a, the new Soja Boy console. Totally, dude. See, I'm, uh, I've already pre-ordered several of those because I want one in every room in my house. No, I'm not even talking about the one we talked about last week. I'm talking is there, about is the there another new, one. There's a new, another one, yeah. It's okay. called the Fuse. The Fuse. Now, what's different about the Fuse? This is a $400 console. 
okay, what's the deal with this? Is it just more games uh, already built into it? Uh, I think so, uh, but it's. Uh, I saw one of the games was Mighty Number no. Nine, <laughs> so it's like it's uh, not just you know old emulated games. I think it's like somewhat newer games so but new really successful critically acclaimed games like yeah mighty like, like mighty number nine yeah exactly okay. <laughs> so i i started googling this thing the fuse because obviously he just stole it from somewhere and i found a GameSpot video from two years ago and this chinese company was at e3 debuting this console um uh like like i said two years ago um it's got just like a knockoff xbox one controller and it looks like a ps4 console kind of so it's just like a smush or a f hence the name fuse like a fusion of both of them uh but yeah it's uh it's so funny like i have, I have no clue like how he's like doing this because I, I follow him on twitter now because of this and he just is constantly saying like i've made over a million dollars on this stuff and i just uh like what idiots are buying this stuff um, sounds like there's plenty of idiots out there. I mean, we do live in a pretty, pretty large world full of billions of people. So there's got to be at least a percentage of them that are idiots <laughs> yeah. that invest in this. But, uh, Hey, if they enjoy it, I don't like see some, that much harm. Some poor kid is getting a, a, a soja game console for Christmas. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, it'd be one thing if they don't know the difference, but to think yeah. you're getting like a real console and then getting that would be pretty heartbreaking yeah because like let's say like a parent is like who <laughs> like this this scenario that probably maybe uh, this scenario that i'm going to talk about probably is has happened one time but like let's say this random like dad a follows soja boy on uh twitter because he used to crank that soldier boy back in high school so he just follows soldier boy on twitter knows nothing about games sees there's a new soja boy console buys it for his kid and it's like oh yeah dude i'm sure i'm sure my kid can play fortnite on this thing because everything's on fortnite and uh the kid opens it up and he's playing uh an emulation of freaking like street fighter 2 alpha protocol hyper 5 edition uh on christmas day you know it sounds so sick dude with while he's wearing his uh soldier watch I certainly hope so. While playing uh, Crank That Soldier Boy in the background. Yeah, with his soldier ear pods as well. Are those Listening to it, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that sounds like quite the Christmas day, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah, on second thought, that, that sounds perfect. So, mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to... I haven't asked for much this year for Christmas, but I think you've just enlightened me on what I really need <laughs> in my life, and it's all of those things yeah. Christmas morning. For sure, man. So... Yeah, thanks for that. No problem. Um, so just to, to throw it out there, um, since we mentioned it, Discord Store is going to offer developers 90% of game revenues. So that's uh, pretty in insane. Whereas Epic's was, was it 70%, something like that? Uh, yeah, it was 7 30 Yeah, so that's uh, pretty wild. And <laughs> it's funny so, how this uh, war has begun, yeah. uh, begun among... Uh, companies want to make their own stores <laughs> now there's another company's just going to be like you make uh, we make no money just come yeah. here and get a hundred percent yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get 99.9 percent .9 of your revenue so now i wonder how epic will respond to this because it's not like epic needs to go the 90 percent. but why wouldn't developers go for discord over epic if it's that much of a difference uh-huh so it'll be interesting interesting to see how that well, plays I out i think it's epic also just I guess it has to do with like exposure and stuff on yeah on said launcher whereas like Steam if you can get on the, the page or you know more people are using Steam so I guess there's a higher percentage chance of somebody seeing your game in that store for sure um, but I don't know with like a trillion people playing Fortnite and there's like as of now there's like eight or nine games on there then if you could like push really hard right now to, to be one of those few games then there's a lot of people seeing your stuff when they're booting up Fortnite. yeah same with with discord though when you think about a, a ton of people use discord even when they're not playing games so yeah. and discord advertises when you open it up now like their store has all kinds of stuff that's thrown in your face so if a game if you're one of the first few games on discord store i imagine you'll be promoted a bit and it might catch someone's attention while you're there yeah so 
Yeah, I think uh, both for Epic and Discord, I mean, indie games have potential to really uh, see some, like you said, exposure especially, but see some success financially just from those deals. So yeah. That's pretty cool. Just in addition to, of course, Steam and everywhere else, they have their game. But yeah, I wonder if it's a situation where if you're on Epic Store, you can also be on Discords or if there's barriers to that. I don't know. But might as well go for both of them if you can. Yeah. What do you think of that uh, Spider-Man Silver Lining trailer? Uh, I think it looks great. I'm excited to play it. I love the Spider-Man DLCs. I think the suit selection is the best out of the DLCs so far. I think all three of them look freaking awesome. They do. And uh, as I was going to say earlier, I absolutely love that the Sam Raimi suit is not here. I love it. I love that people are just <laughs> losing out of spite their minds. And also just because you don't really like the look of it anyway, right? Both. Yeah. Um. I think it's overrated suit, and I love that people are just pissing their pants and in, in rage over it because it's so stupid. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm sure just the uh, I, I don't know if I've already said this before, but I, who knows if there are like legalities and stuff with the I know Sony's doing it, but like they're using uh two like the two movies now they're using the spider-verse sir and then they're using the two mcu uh 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 costumes you know so maybe like there's a partnership with uh disney or something to exclusively use those and they can't use like the the amazing spider-man or the original spider-man because they're like sony films or something i don't know like maybe maybe there's a reason because of that but also my my first point, like, it's not that cool. Like, it's just a normal looking Spider Man suit with like silver webs. Like, that just would have been a waste of a slot, in my opinion. So. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I don't endorse the rage by any means, but I do relate to both sides of uh, the fence on this one. I, I see why, for the, the sake of nostalgia, why people would want that suit because a lot of people grew up with those movies as you and I did. And I, I'm in the same boat. I don't love that suit, but I, I like it in the sense of just kind of the, the story behind it and, and who wore the suit and, and loving those movies as a kid. And to an extent, I still really enjoy those movies, especially the first and second one. But um, I think it's nostalgia for most people. But I, I think the best point I've seen that you also mentioned online is that there are three or four suits that look like the classic suit already with just variations yeah. to them. So I don't need it either, but I, I understand why people are upset. But again, I don't I don't get what, what the rage is all about. <laughs> it's fine to be disappointed, but to freak out online about its absence is ridiculous. Yep. I agree. So, but yeah, I love and it's the... It's been uh, annoying personally, like every single Insomniac post on, on Twitter especially is just like every comment is like, where's the Ramy suit? Where's yeah. the Ramy suit? <laughs> so... I'm glad. I feel Hopefully bad for them too because they developed one of the best games, not only of the year, but in my opinion, one of the best games ever made, especially for superhero games. And the tail end of their story this year is people whining about a silly little costume in the game. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but dude, the 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 Spider Verse suit looks cool, but the uh, the cyborg suit and then that other armor looks so freaking cool yeah i love the armor especially yeah those the eyes in the new armor mm -hmm. just how like sharp and like jagged they are like so cool and imagine playing the entire game in the cyborg suit <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> i mean imagine playing the game in the undie suit but still yeah yeah those suits are really cool i'm excited to have those and um probably nick away at some new game plus again once i play through this dlc but um did you ever finish uh turf wars i did yeah i liked it a lot Okay. Did you like the? Oh, so you finished the first one as well? I did. Yeah, I'm all caught up. Okay. What did? I don't want to spoil anything, but what did you th just think about the story in the first one? I like. I, I enjoyed the story more in the first one than I did Turf Wars. But I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I like Hammerhead a lot, and I actually really, really like the opening to Turf Wars a lot. I thought it was yeah. an excellent opening mission. Uh -huh. But uh, of course, I think Black Hat, like I said, the sh her on-screen chemistry with Spider-Man is. Awesome. Very entertaining. Yes. And I want to see more of that, of course. And I, I think everyone knows she's still alive. She obviously didn't die in that explosion. But <laughs> um, I assume she's going to show up. I assume she's going to show up in part three to help Spider-Man deal with this big finale in some way. 
All right. But let's not spoil anything else, just in case. Oh Nobody. yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot that uh, not everyone has played. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. Good thing I'm not talking about Red Dead's ending or anything right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, forget everything the, I said. We're making things up right now. Yeah. Though I, I can say, having played all those, uh, those that. I guess technically it's a spoiler, but that's that's not like a, a big deal. It's not, no, no, yeah, not at all. So I didn't spoil any of the good stuff in the story. Anyway, yeah, there, so. there's yeah the the best thing, which I'm assuming like it to be extremely vague. I that one kind of plot point with him and Black Cat. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I th- I thought that was that took me by surprise to say the least. Yeah, me too. It was it was yeah. solid. I like that a lot. Yeah. Very fitting for her character, too. Yes. So, yeah. Consistent all the way through. I dug it. For sure. Um, yeah. We'll see what uh, Silver Sable's got in this follow-up for the big finale. I'm kind of sad. I hope they have maybe something more planned. Um, but, I mean, if this is all we get, I'm very satisfied because the core game is excellent, as we know, and the DLC's been fun, and we have plenty of suits to fly or to swing around in. Yeah. So I'm, ju- I'm just so it. happy that it takes place after the main game. Yeah, me too. I that, appreciate that. That is so... Uh, cool just kind of hearing uh peter somewhat getting caught up with some some uh characters after you know the original end of the game just to you know kind of catch up so you know we're not waiting years and years just just to see kind of you know what's going on in that universe after the uh the credits ended absolutely well uh on that note, Preston, Metro Exodus has officially moved, but not in the way we expected. You know, we we anticipated it to, anticipated it to potentially be delayed, but it yes. has mo- been moved forward a week to February fifteenth. Yeah, that that shocked me. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I guess Anthem is really spooking all these uh, these developers, man, or these publishers at least, because uh, and no one wants to compete with Anthem on day one, I guess. But, which is not a surprise because a lot of us expected for these these uh, games to move. But um, of all the days for it to move to, I did not expect it to move forward a week. So they must have a lot of confidence in the uh, the build they're currently at <laughs> for it to yeah. move forward a week. So I'm very excited to play that, though. I love uh, the first two. I, I still haven't finished the first one because I'm in the middle of uh, the librarian sequence in the first one. But uh-huh. loved Last Light, so I'm very excited for Exodus. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited for it. Totally, I just bro. hope it comes out and is stable. Yeah, me too. That'd be nice. Yeah. Especially on PC. I imagine it'd be pretty solid on PC because both Last Light and uh, 2033 are really smooth on PC. And I both times I played the, the game were on Xbox One. So, mm, and it was buggy. That's the problem right there. Yeah, that's uh, the footstool's fault. And that's the excuse yeah. I'm going to use for now. For sure. Hashtag not fanboys, by the way. Um... Preston, I don't have any more news unless there's something that happened in the news this week that I overlooked and that you know of. Um, I don't think so, sir. Right. Oh, Kingdom Hearts 3 has been leaked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah. Thankfully, I haven't seen any spoilers, but uh, that's a big bummer. Yeah. Even if have I saw seen any spoilers, spoilers? I, no, but I, I probably would not even understand any of it okay. anyways. <laughs> I just don't want to know all the worlds in the game. I, I'm, yeah, I don't yeah. really care about story points either but uh i don't want to have the world spoiled for me yeah did you see the uh oh, excuse me oh, excuse me uh did you see the ps4 pro bundle uh i've seen what the the console looks like i haven't yeah. seen what's included in the bundle I mean, I'm, you know just just what the console looks like very oh yeah it looks awesome very cool looking console it looks very awesome very yeah. slick that jacob needs to jump on that he doesn't I think he should too. I think he's probably not going to because he just invested in that those PC components. But yeah, that's true. Yeah, if I was going to get one, that'd be the one I'd get if I had not already invested in a pro. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I've bought three pros. That's how much. That's I, amazing. So much I that's love PlayStation. <laughs> and you only have one in your possession right now, right? No, I have two. I have the God of War and the Spider Man. Would you ever sell Jacob your God of War one for a reduced price? Uh, no. Okay, you I just like know. the look of that one on your shelf, don't you? Yeah, it's it's just in my bookshelf, right behind my uh, Kratos statue. And you played God of War on that console, right? I did. The, that's the only game I played on that console. Nice. That's <laughs> that's kind of fitting. Yeah, I should remain that way forever. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Um, yeah. How you liking your Spider-Man machine these days? I like Still it. Still playing your PS4 games normally? Uh, yeah, yeah. But believe it or not, it, it every disc I put in there, uh, 
it actually plays it. Spider Man doesn't automatically play. Oh, really? Um, well, that's, yeah. that's surprising. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I yeah. think I don't know if I'm crazy, but I, I think my God of War one is quieter. Um, I hope time to swap it out. But I could be crazy. But uh, no, I'm, I'm loving my uh, Spider Man one. I think it's the the coolest looking one for sure. Yeah, I'm not jealous or anything, dude. I swear. Oh, okay. Yeah. Speaking of PlayStation, I I keep forgetting to take back my uh PlayStation One Classic. I don't even know if I talked about that on the podcast, but I pre-ordered it and canceled it, and they still sent it to me, and I'm pretty sure they still charged me too. Uh, and I keep forgetting to take it back to Best Buy, so I have this uh, PS One Classic just just sitting on my shelf over here. Yeah, just hanging out. Um, At least it looks cool. It does, but. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to use a different ad- adjective. It looks adorable, I imagine. Mm, I don't know. I haven't opened it yet, but I know you can okay. hack it. I saw somebody's already done that. So yeah, That's what I hear. Yeah, maybe I... Uh, Dude, maybe if I could get like I Halo it. on it and uh, <laughs> maybe some... Maybe I'll put Smash Bros on it too, dude, and just yeah. play that from home on that. That'd be I, pretty sick. If I can just get Legend of Lega- Legania or Legalia, whatever it is, on there, then I would be completely happy, and I might keep it if that was the case. Uh, if I could get Jedi Power Battles on it so I could finally beat it in my older age, uh-huh. then that'd be nice. I was incapable of beating it as a child. Okay. That I'll... was the Dark Souls of PlayStation 1, <laughs> Jedi Power Battles. <laughs> Definitely. I remember getting to the second world, or like on a, the the... Where does Jabba live? Not Jabba. Freaking Tatooine. Uh, no, where what's his face lives? Uh, You're talking about the Gungans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. as far as I made it to where Jar Jar's from. Yeah, yeah Naboo yeah, yeah, is yeah. where where is the planet. Okay, yeah, that was the second level. Yeah, I remember these um, like animals would all be running across the screen. And you'd have to dodge them or something. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny about that game. It really wasn't even the gameplay that was challenging. It was the just the mechanics were awful. It just felt horrible to control. <laughs> I mean, I'm the sure we there's a lot just... of platforming in the game too. I would always fall to my death in that game. Yeah, you think it was actually hard, or we were just stupid kids? Yeah, I think it's pretty hard because I remember playing it at Zach's house in high school again because he still had the game on something, mm-hmm. and uh, it was still hard. So, okay. I, I think it's just the mechanics fault. Because I'm mean, thinking about it, we played games that were arguably harder than that when we were kids that we were capable of yeah. beating. But that's true. So it's just a dinky uh dinky controls man but hey i loved it nonetheless because it was star wars let's hope uh, Je- uh jedi fallen order whatever it's called <laughs> respawns game is uh, uh way better than jedi power battles let's hope that'd be nice man if we have those buttery smooth mechanics from i'm not saying i want to run in walls like a pilot from titanfall but if it even feels remotely as good as titanfall feels then i will be a happy camper i'll be a happy jedi i'll say yeah so that's exciting um dude let's jump into community questions brah okay ladies and gentlemen uh i can't say this enough thank you so much for continuing to send us questions week in and week out uh, even on uh, weeks like this, when there's not much to discuss, is when we most appreciate them because not only we get to hear from you guys and talk about some hilarious stuff, some interesting stuff, but uh, it fills up the latter half of this ep- this episode when the the news is shallow. So thank you for doing so. If you'd like your questions read right on this show or ask IOG, which we may do once more before the year ends, that'd be nice. Uh, you can reach us in one of three places. You can email us at itsobviousgaming at gmail dot com. You can tweet at us at obvious underscore gaming. Or submit your questions in the Ask IOG section of our Discord channel. Now, excuse me, got to catch my breath there. <sighs> if you want your questions read on air, publicly to the world, always include the hashtag Ask IOG with your question so we know you want it read on the podcast because we don't want to accidentally read your private messages. So please include that at all times. That being said, J- uh, not, I almost called you Jacob. Sorry, I'm used to doing these one on ones with Jacob <laughs> these days. Um, first one comes from. Grabbing a couple from YouTube here. I didn't have a chance to put them on a separate sheet. From Dexter Clark. He writes in and says, Curious to know what y'all think of Just Cause 4. I usually, I usually love the series, but was very disappointed with the texture issues, motion blur, and horrible cutscenes debacle. I mean, the cutscenes are rendering at like 900p on Xbox One on a 4K TV. Sorry for the rant. Just, just, just really disappointed. Great show. Happy to have Preston back in the round table. That was on YouTube this past week. Uh, I agree, and Preston's once again absent from this table, and so is Jacob. I'm all in my lonesome, unfortunately. But uh, 
We have not played Just Cause 4. You haven't played it, right? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't played a Just Cause since, like, the second one. But yeah, I never played 3. As well. Uh, well, wait, I did play 3. I played 3 for a single Let's Play that Jacob and I did, and for some reason it didn't grab me. I never played it again after that. But Which is weird, because I love the idea of just causing absolute mayhem in those games creatively with all the tools at your disposal, but for some reason I've not felt compelled to play them, and especially 4, because the reviews have been pretty poor, and I hear the, the, the story missions are just horrible. Not horrible, but just very repetitive and not at all interesting. And yeah. it's one of those games where you're, you're kind of forced to make your own fun, which I don't always say, because in, in a lot of ways it's just a really fun sandbox to run around in and just blow stuff up for a little while. But um, it sounds like fans of the series uh, that have been pretty dedicated to it for a while seem to be mostly disappointed with it across the board. Yeah, so, I was listening I to the... Really, uh one of the easy allies podcasts the it's called frame trap yeah. it's pretty much just a really long podcast where people just talk about what they're playing and uh i com- i'm blanking completely on the dude's name um but he's the uh big he's a big just cause fan and uh he pretty much kind of went on for like 20 to 30 minutes about how uh he just loves just calls and he'll still like buy the next one he's a sucker for buying them but just just how disappointed he was in this one just how it, it adds absolutely nothing from the third one the story sucks the the new weather things there they added do absolutely nothing um like you just said the story missions suck um lots of graphical issues i, I believe he said the character models were were like the worst this generation that he had seen so yikes yeah i've 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 not heard uh, very good things about it well that's a major bummer dexter i'm sorry to hear you two were disappointed by the uh massive disappointment that just cause four is but i can't relate unfortunately it's a piece of crap Yep, it's the worst game of the year by far. Yeah. Uh, Fallout 76 is way better. Should have played that instead. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I know there's one more in here. Where'd it go? Maybe someone replied elsewhere. Um, it's vanished. One sec. I can find it. Have faith. Um... I can't find it. I'll have to come back to it next week. Okay. On to Discord. Bear with me here. I walked in my door and sat down to record this podcast. That's how crammed we are this week. Very <laughs> limited on time as usual. Um, let me find the top here. Um, Smash is released. Uh, holiday's coming. We read that. Um, read that. Okay, here's one from Kyle. Kyle writes in and says, in fact, I think this is the only one on Discord. I'm going to pull up our backlog here in a minute. (laughs) Kyle writes in and says, hello, gentlemen. I'll have you know the content you produce here in this fine part of the interwebs gets me fucking steamy. I've recently (laughs) done a deep dive into the Golden Saucer and uh, Final Fantasy XIV, which if you don't know, is a two-story casino stocked to the brim with mini games from Chocobo Racing to card games to an actual StarCraft-esque clone that uses the pets you've collected as units. Needless to say, I'm spending almost all my time farming this place out, and it's been a blast. That being said, what is the time you feel a game took the extra mile to include additional content for the better or the worse? Uh, Do many games tend to grab your attention in games, or do you usually push them aside to stick to the main content? Keep up the great content, boys. If uh, you stop, I will run out of things to masturbate to. That's good enough. He also includes... In my drunken stupor, I've thought of a question that I want some serious thought of you, that I want serious thought out of you boys. If you could define your love life with a video game title, what would it be? To give an example, mine would be Command and Conquer Three. Red Alert. <laughs> <laughs> so let's answer the mini games and extra content in the game first, and then we'll get on to the love life titles. Okay. Uh, you. <laughs> All right, you go ahead. I, I'm not exactly sure I understood the question, so if you answer it, maybe I'll, I'll have a better understanding. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I was just playing a game with mini games in it that I really enjoyed. I'm trying to think what it was. Um, Daggummit, bruh. What was it? I can't remember. Um, can you think of anything? 
think of any like any games with a ton of extra any content. games that like developers went the extra mile as far as like like an additional little area whether it be middle mini games or a bit of content that isn't really part of the main gameplay loop of the game but it's just a little extra bit there that was cool i mean i guess red dead there's like a, a billion mini games I, f- I feel like half of that game is just they went out of their way to just make extra stuff <laughs> yeah all for the sake of just further immersion i guess you know yeah. like the dominoes uh poker uh five finger fillet fishing hunting i mean hunting's a really big part of the game but stuff like that yeah so I always appreciate that, of course. Um, God of War. I, I feel like the, the the added the two added realms of um, I'm, I'm going to completely butcher the name like Mesfelheim and uh, uh, Nif, Nif, Nifilgard, or whatever, <laughs> Nifilgard, whatever it is, yeah. or Nifilheim or whatever. Uh, those two Nilfgaard, areas bro. I thought were were really cool. Kind of switched up. They, they didn't like, of course, it's combat, but kind of just made it a little different adding challenges and adding like a timer kind of making it more uh urgent you know getting through the areas but in niflheim whatever it's called um so it switched up the gameplay just a bit and and that those two realms totally felt like things that could have been added on for dlc like easy um but they were included so i thought that was awesome that is pretty cool now, what, uh, what game would uh, describe your love life, Garrett? Um, well, there's different stages here. Um, in high school, I'd probably have a different title than I would today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in high school, uh, my buddy Zach and I, who you've uh, probably heard in this podcast in the past, if you're a longtime listener, um, went on many, many, many double dates in high school, almost exclusively. We never really dated alone. We always went on double dates, and we'd only, we'd only date girls who were friends with each other. <laughs> it just was more fun that way. So maybe uh, I'm trying to think of some, some good co-op games here. What's that game where you wear the masks and it's a co-op shooter? Oh, Payday. Yeah, it, it maybe Payday. Um, that's not <laughs> okay. a good title, but think of co-op <laughs> games as what it was kind of like. It was like Cookies and Cream that we used to play that co-op game. Uh, sure. Um, maybe you could say uh, in high school it was more like Super Mario Odyssey. Um. <laughs> I don't, uh, I think your the titles are supposed to, I don't think it's yeah, like. Yeah, the title is supposed to describe it. Yeah, not that no, I'm thinking gameplay. Game. <laughs> no. It's because gameplay is key, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm really bad with remembering titles off the top of my head. I'm going to look at the posters in my room here. Uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, dude. Um, You got any for me? Um... Doom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I was looking at my Doom poster a second ago. Um, uh, Anthem, man. <laughs> Anthem. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, uh, Justice League. Uh, the Walking <laughs> Dead. <laughs> um, Hunt Showdown, dude. That's, hunt, me that's a, day. a good one. Hunt, that that should be yours for sure. Hunt Showdown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a committed relationship at the moment, so I can't use Hunt Showdown, but perhaps in, in high school and maybe my early college <laughs> days, it was Tomb, Hunt Showdown. Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, that, that's perfect. That's or just one. Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. <laughs> um, Uncharted, A Thief's End is probably pretty good. Okay. Um, the Last of Us. Now we're just naming video game titles. Yeah, that, just name realistically, it I'd say high school, college, early college era was Hunt Showdown, probably, and uh, of course, any kind, any kind of co-op title you can think of. Nowadays, it's probably um, uh, I don't know something meager, like uh, something normal. I don't know, man. I'm very, very bad at thinking of titles of the top. That's fine. We head. named enough. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we got our point across there. For sure. Oh, let me pull up our backlog of questions here. One sec. I know we have a few we can use. Forgive us for not being prepared. Um, dude. Uh, we're saving that for next week. Can't use that one. Is anybody at a COG or... 
anything you know of working on that uh new insurgency game that came out uh that was on the list of games to review this month but uh, i didn't ask for it i thought about asking to review it myself and i'm sure someone's on it by now mm-hmm. game looks so. pretty cool in my opinion it does look pretty cool so yeah i might wind up playing that depending on the reviews um, here's one from Josh Scriber I can read. Okay. Josh writes in and says, My friends, the time is upon us. Hope you all had a productive week because the saga of catching up on multiple games has arrived. If you guys had to pitch a game idea to a developer with no visual rep- uh, presentation, what would it be? For the longest time, I've created a full-fledged Yu-Gi-Oh! game for PS4. Uh, shitbox and PC. I assume he's referring to the footstool when he says shitbox. <laughs> Maybe. If you're not familiar with the series, just bear with me. Imagine a monster-battling turn-based RPG built on the player creating a generic character and jumping into a Yu-Gi-Oh! world weaved from one uh, of the seasons of the show. Not an exact copy, but detailed enough that it has the major landmarks of places from that season. Your goal? Set out on a journey to collect strong enough uh, dual monsters to explore the world, befriend some duelists, defeat other duelists, and ultimately find and halt an organization of necromancers <laughs> from, rec- from resurrecting an ancient dual monster that ravaged the entire planet ages ago. Also, considering that Yu-Gi-Oh! easily has over 1,000 monsters in the series, this will definitely be a collector's game. Uh, that sounds pretty cool. I remember you uh, cried your way to a copy of a Yu-Gi-Oh! game on PlayStation 1 back in the day, right? Mm. Uh, or is that PS2? I cried, but I, it was PS1. But I, I definitely okay. begged. Yeah. <laughs> I don't recall crying. Preston, I remember tears flowing, if I remember correctly. I don't know. We were in a GameStop. <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, an EB Games, actually. Or somewhere in Oregon. Yeah, yeah. We, we were on our family vacation. Uh, both of our families had traveled to Oregon together, and we went to a, to the mall for a day. Of, of of all places to go to a mall, when we're in the middle of Oregon going to a mall one day. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we are breaking up the monotony of the uh, beautiful nature there. But we went to an EB Games and Preston spotted this Yu-Gi-Oh game and uh, begged his parents as if he was begging for his life. And he wound yeah. up getting that copy. And uh, I watched you play it for the remainder of the trip <laughs> whenever we were indoors. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think I liked it. It was nothing like Yu-Gi-Oh. It was like a completely different <laughs> type of game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was on the cover, so I had to have it. Yep. I knew they had that Yu-Gi-Oh card game that you and Jacob played for a bit on mobile, right? Uh yeah, yeah. I downloaded it, but I never played it. Well, I I actually played that religiously for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. I liked it. It was hard to play online because people would have decks that were just, just uh, super overpowered. Like that, there was a a strategy that everybody was using to like win in like two or three turns. So that was kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, I never fully understood the game because you cheated your way to victory when you played me a few times. So I mm. never trusted anything I had ever learned about it. <laughs> so I technically know nothing. But no, I, I like the idea of a, of a full-fledged Yu-Gi-Oh game. I don't know how it would do nowadays, but perhaps at the scale of, say, how the Dragon Ball games have been, but Yu-Gi-Oh running around. I mean, even like sort of like Pokemon, but, you know, it's dual monsters, as Josh Scriber suggested. But I think his idea sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know how big the Yu-Gi-Oh fan base is these days. I know a lot of people still collect the cards and I play mean, the card game. The card game is, is still really big. So even a game, even if it's just, a, I mean, that's again, I, I would say like, oh, a game like uh, Hearthstone, but it's Yu-Gi-Oh, but that already exists on mobile. So yeah, um, his idea is cool. If people would play it, I'd be up for it. I'd have to learn how to play for real, <laughs> but it sounds pretty cool to me. You have any ideas yourself? If you have to pitch a game without a visual presentation. I mean, I've pitched countless games on this yeah, podcast. We've, in the we've past. pitched so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you if you guys want the ultimate pitch episode, um, I'm I don't know how this episode holds up, but I remember having a lot of fun with it. And even Zach was on this episode. It's titled uh, "Pitching the Next Star Wars Video Game." It is forever ago. I'm talking like maybe episode forty or fifty or sixty somewhere in there. But uh, we pitched a lot of Star Wars games, uh, a couple of which which will probably never exist, but ideas that I think sound really cool. So if you want to hear us pitch some games, I suggest that episode. Yeah. Next one comes from um Slacko Butt. Slacko Butt says, any video game trailers you remember being awesome and then had a game turned out to be and then the game turned out to be shit. The new Walking Dead game comes to mind. <laughs> um 
trailers that were good, but the game sucked. Um, I'll have to think about it for a bit. What do you think? Um, I remember the I, anytime anybody talks about trailers, they bring up that original Dead Island trailer. Um, I don't think the game sucked. I just didn't like it that much. Um, that trailer got me pretty hyped for it, though. Game Which one was that again? Uh, the one with the little girl in reverse falling out of the uh, hotel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's really awesome trailer. Um, yeah. Didn't dig the game too much. The game definitely didn't suck. It just was not. Uh, it was extremely buggy for me on 360, and uh, mm-hmm. that kept me from from wanting to play it. Yeah. Uh, Overkill's The Walking Dead had incredible trailers, and the game's not very good. And that, that game, like, ruined that company <laughs> yeah i did i mean i told you when i played a d3 i was not even remotely impressed at all it yeah. also ran very poorly and it seems like the final product wasn't much different from that but the trailers were breathtaking so when you, when you were playing example. it were like the developers watching you or anything sort of it was one of those situations where their capture setup was not responding properly uh-huh. and it it captured the game incorrectly like the aspect ratio and frame rate was all off and everything uh-huh and I told him, I was like, oh, you know, I'd love to have some B-roll because I knew Cog was gonna, for Cog I was going to do a video version, which I wound up doing, and I got what I needed, thankfully. But um, uh, they asked if I wanted to play through it again to capture it, and I was like, no, sorry, I can't. <laughs> I arguably had the time, but I was so bored while I played it. I was like, oh, no, I got what I need, thanks. But um, oh, so of course, t- I mean, a- any game I can go see early is always an honor. Like, I love doing that, but that game yeah. did not impress me in the slightest, the so thing- it was kind of a bummer. Did you tell him that, like... Guys, this sucks. Did you say that? No, I was honest in the in the impressions, though. I told them that it. it I didn't tell them, obviously, but in the video coverage, I said that it ran a little poorly. And in gameplay wise, it wasn't necessarily innovative. It reminded me of a cross between, you know, like uh, not not I think payday. It was the payday developers. It was uh, uh-huh. yeah, them. So that and Left for Dead and a little bit of State of Decay here and there. When you're not in the world's actually killing zombies, you kind of have like a, a mini base area and you can interact with other people and everything, but. Reminded me of a cross between those three games, and it had elements of all those and did not even live up to the best qualities of any of them. So, Man. Um, yeah, a bit of a letdown, but the isn't trailers it, were awesome. Isn't it crazy that, like, just kind of in the game world we're in right now, how pretty much, for the most part, everything licensed that's coming out is really good? And then, like, The Walking Dead, out of all franchises, just cannot make, like, a good game minus, you know, like, the Telltale games, like, you, you know? Yeah. I know it's, it's bizarre, because you think, I mean, I mean, you think, but we have a lot of zombie games already, so what can Walking Dead do other than the characters that they've, they've established? And even, I think it really it comes down to characters, honestly, because every type of zombie game has been done, I feel like, at this point. Yeah. So I think that's why Telltale's seen so much, so much success is because of their story, not really just the gameplay itself. So um, that's probably the solution is if you can do anything Walking Dead related, it has to be character focused. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, that's just... Oh, we've answered those. I'm going I'm to grab at least one more before we scoot. Um, that's too old. <laughs> Um, there's got to be something here. Mm. I don't know, man. I don't know if we have anything. Ah, uh, then we're good. We don't need to read a yeah, question. Yeah, I won't, I won't make you guys sit, sit here in silence for too long. <laughs> We've <laughs> done that too long. Uh, we but, have. But uh, yeah, minimal, minimal news, minimal community questions, but... Almost made it to an hour and a half. I think it was pretty solid. I had a great time talking to you nonetheless, Preston. I hope we didn't bore everyone to death this week. I know it was it was slow. Not a whole lot going on, but next week should be awesome. Jacob should be back. Three of us will be together, hopefully. And uh, we'll talk about our games of the year, our top five games and whatnot, and just some other stuff we want to discuss. Because uh, this year was absolutely phenomenal for games. Uh, one of the best in our lifetime, I'd say. And 2019 is looking very bright, so... Plenty to talk about for the remainder of this year uh, on the podcast, and we look forward to talking to you guys in the comments below. We encourage you to comment below on anything we discuss this week, anything you'd like to hear us talk about next week, perhaps. And uh, please keep those community questions coming because we'd love to have some for a final Ask IOG of the year. And uh, 
maybe not the good way to reflect on our year as a whole, sort of like an end of the year podcast on the next Ask IOG. So keep those coming if you're willing. And uh, I think that's it for me, Preston, if you want to sign us out here. Yeah, man, sounds good. This is the It's Obvious podcast. Uh, the show where my best friend and I get together every single week to discuss video games, obviously. Please subscribe to the channel over at youtube.com slash it's obvious gaming and also subscribe to us over on the Apple Podcasting app. That helps us out a whole bunch and we would be very thankful for that. Uh, please like and comment as well. Please just check the description down below. Follow us on all our social media pages, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think that'll do it for this week, Garrett. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to go back to Atlanta and uh, walk the dog and go to work, my friend. That sounds great. I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so envious, man. That makes me want to throw up and cry. I only had like three hours of sleep last night. So, Man. Yeah, I didn't sleep long myself, but I do not have that option, unfortunately. Mm, I'm sorry. But, uh, think about me while you dream. Think about me in your dreams. I dream will. about me. I will. Copy that. Cool. I appreciate that. You mm -hmm. know what I just thought of? What? <laughs> That EB Games Call of Duty Advanced I've been, Warfare trailer. Dude, I've been quoting that copy that like for two weeks now because of that yeah. commercial. Yeah. Copy that. <laughs> what a work of art that trailer is. It's great. But uh, anyways, right. thanks guys for uh, listening to us and uh, we look forward to talking to y'all next week. See ya.